All right. I'm sure by now you guys are catching on to that. The fact that I have read three poems in one night because I'm wearing the same sweatshirt. I'm from Conifer, Colorado. So I got my Conifer sweatshirt on. This is like the most comfortable sweatshirt in the world. So I'm all comfortable. I'm down in my sports room. Whoops. Point this way with my webcam. With all my Broncos stuff. I'm sure it's like my Wheaties box on the wall and my um, Super Bowl sign. I'm a major, major Broncos fan. Um, so anyways, here I am with my third poem of the night. I'm on a roll here. You will need your Classics for Young Readers book for this assignment. Be sure that when you're reading these poems and you answer all the questions and everything, you're checking the lessons off in the OLS. You're reading it. You're comprehending it. We're kind of diving into more of the meaning of the poem and hopefully really um, having you grow an appreciation for poetry. So this is from the narrative verse part of your book. And the listeners begins on page 69. Now we're going to read a little bit and then we'll stop and discuss the rhyme scheme. As I've mentioned before, the rhyme scheme is imperative in understanding the poem and the voice of the author and what they want you to understand. So let's go ahead and dive in. Classics for Young Readers, page 69, The Listeners by Walter de la Mer. Isn't that a beautiful name? Oh, I wish mine was as sophisticated as de la Mer. All right, here we go. The Listeners. Is there anybody there? said the traveler, knocking on the moonlit door, and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor. And a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveler's head, and he smote upon the door again a second time. Is there anybody there? he said. But no one descended to the traveler, no head from the leaf-fringed sill, leaned over and looked his great eyes where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet moonlight to the voice from the world of men. Now, if you listen carefully, you can hear there's a rhyme scheme. The first line, no rhyme. Second line, rhymes with the fourth line. If you look at this, it looks a little bit different from the previous poems. The previous poems had, you know, four lines in a stanza, and that's how the verse was. This is written more in lines, like a paragraph, as you can see. It just goes on and on. There's no spaces between them. But every other line does rhyme. Oh, and that rhymed too. So, every other line rhymes. Now, let's look closely at this poem. There's a traveler. No name. His name's Traveler. That'd be like if my name was Teacher. He comes upon this crazy house and knocks on the door and there's no sound. He knocks again and now all of a sudden the author is alluding to listeners in the house. This can be ghosts. This could be actual people just sitting there listening, maybe going, ha ha ha, we're not going to answer the door for you. Things like that. But I do um, want to show the language used here. The forest's ferny floor. The leaf fringed sill. He uses these melodic um, syllabic meters, forest, ferny, floor, alliteration there. Each word starts with the same letter, forest, ferny, floor. I'm going to write that one down on my notes. I'm going to paint the word picture. That would be if I was the like, biggest, brightest Bronco fan. I'm using the same beginning sound to create a pattern to my writing, the forest, ferny, floor. Oh my goodness, you guys want to see something? Look here. Can you see my doggy Bella? There she is. Bella, look here, girl. Say hi. <laughs> my dog loves to sit next to me while I teach. I think she's going to be the smartest, most poetic golden retriever out there. So, anyways, there's a little interruption. Back to the poem, The Listeners. We're at the bottom of page 69. Um... I'm going to go ahead and repeat a couple of the lines just to get back into it. But a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men. Oh, there's a hint. I think it's ghosts because they hear the voice from the world of men. They must not be from the world of men if they're listening so intently on hearing it. Stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall. 
hearkening in the air, stirred and shaken by the lonely traveler's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf, neath the starred and leafy sky. For he suddenly smote on the door, even louder and lifted his head. Tell them I came, and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake, fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house, from the one man left awake. I, they heard his foot upon the stirrup, and the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence surged softly backwards when the plunging hoofs were gone. So clearly this traveler didn't just happen upon this house. He intently came to this house. He had intentions of visiting. Whoa, my hand looked like a 3D movie there. Woo! Um, he had intentions of visiting this house. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm random all the time. I think you guys know that about me by now, though. So he comes to this house, and he's knocking, knocking, knocking. Now he kind of feels something like, ooh, there's ghosts around, or I don't know what's going on. But he feels, um, it says right here, and he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness answering his cry. So he can sense something is there. So he knocked a third time, and then he says, tell them I came and no one answered, and that I kept my word. He obviously made a promise to someone at some point. And it may be one of the listeners you know, after they they're died and everything. He kept his word by coming back to the house and trying to reach somebody. So he feels their presence. He keeps his promise. And then he moves on. So it kind of it's a mysterious poem in that we never truly know who the listeners are. We never truly know who this traveler is. And um, tell, tell them that I came and not answered, who's them? But it does make for a great poem. We have the every other line rhyme scheming. This author used some great alliteration in here. I think there was some more over here on the second page. I bet you guys can find it though. Look for a pattern of at least three words that start with the same letter, like forest, ferny, floor. So there you go. Ta-da. We finished our, um, actually, I think that is the end of the narrative verse. Or is Casey the Bat next? Nope. We have Casey the Bat next. So I look forward to reading with you all. This one's going to be fun. And um, yeah, hope you guys have a great